Hello dear students. Welcome to the lecture series on power system analysis. Today we will be taking up the topic, topic power angle curve. So before moving on to the power angle curve, we will quickly go through uh, some of the things that we have learned in the last lecture. So in the last lecture we had seen steady state power transfer. So uh, the equation that we derived for steady state power transfer was PR equal to that is receiving end power which was equal to PS VR by X sin delta. VS is sending in voltage, VR is receiving in voltage and X is the reactance of the transmission line assuming R equal to 0 or a lossless line and uh, delta was the angular difference between sending in voltage and the receiving end voltage. And QR was also, also derived. Now PR was uh, proportional to, we saw that PR was proportional to, PR is proportional to sin delta or proportional to delta assuming uh, Vs and Vr are constants and also X is a constant. So sending in voltage and receiving in voltage are remaining the same, also reactants remaining the same. And the QR was proportional to the change in voltage or delta V or the voltage drop, Vs cos delta minus Vr. Okay. Now if you cons consider the values of sending in voltage and receiving in voltage as land to line values, you can get the uh, power flow for a three phase system and if you are considering phase values, you will get the power flow for a single phase system. So with this review in mind, uh, we will move to the power angle curve. So power angle curve is the angle uh, curve that is drawn between power transferred and delta now assuming uh, vs and vr to be fixed and x also remains fixed here pr is proportional to sin delta here you can assume that sending in power is equal to receiving in power assuming r equal to 0 if you are if you have no losses you can say that your sending in power is equal to receiving in power which is proportional to sin delta so the power that is transferred can be uh, plotted to be in a sinusoidal manner and that variation of uh, power is called as a power angle curve. Now this uh, we have some characteristics of power angle curve that is the maximum power that is achieved is at an angle which is equal to delta uh, of 90 degrees. So if you put 90 uh, delta equal to 90 degree you will get uh, Pr equal to uh, Vs Vr by X which is equal to P max. Okay, so your P max is Vs Vr by X and that is at a delta equal to 90 degree. Now the maximum power that can be transferred uh, under this condition is known as steady state limit. This is the maximum power that can be transferred under this particular set of conditions that is assuming R to be 0 and uh, uh, under that assumption. Okay, so if you have a lossless and you can send a maximum power of P max at an angle delta equal to 0 and remember delta is the angular difference between Vs and Vr. Now we will take two cases that is we will first case uh, take the case where your load is a synchronous motor. Now um, maximum power for any load maximum power can be transferred if your load is a synchronous load we will explain how it comes ok so P max can be obtained maximum power can be transferred at a load which is a synchronous load if your load is a synchronous load you can transfer maximum power. Now generally the value of theta is in the range of 80 to 85 assuming your R is available. You are not neglecting the resistance so you will get somewhere in, in the range of 80 to 85 degrees as your theta. Now if you are having from the equation 1 in the last lecture that is uh, equation 1 was PR equal to Vs Vr by X cos theta minus delta minus Vr square by x 
cos theta. So from this equation, your maximum power can be transferred when your theta is equal to delta. Okay. So if it is an induction load, you may not be able to transfer this much power. Only in the case of synchronous load, you are able to transfer this power. Okay. Now we will see why that is happening. Now only in the case of synchronous machine, you are able to make your delta equal to theta. Theta is fixed, but your delta will vary depending on the angular difference between sending in voltage and receiving in voltage. So your delta can match your theta only in the case of a synchronous load. Now we will consider this example where this is a synchronous generator and this is a synchronous motor. Now your uh, synchronous generator is represented by uh, generated EMF E1 uh, with an angle delta 1. E1 is a generated EMF for uh, induced EMF behind the reactants and delta 1 is an angle, angle, of angle of angle that is represented as the angle difference between synchronously rotating reference frame and the rotor. Similarly E2 is the voltage behind reactants for a motor and delta 2 is the angle between synchronously, synchronously rotating reference frame and the rotor for this particular synchronous motor. Now uh, what you can see is that uh, we will take two cases for case 1 you assume that the shaft shaft load of motor is increasing ok shaft power of motor is increasing so that P out increases P in is remaining fixed or constant. The input power to the motor is not changing, only the output power is increasing. So, in such a case, the machine will decelerate because the stored energy in the rotating mass will be converted to uh, mechanical output. So, your machine will decelerate and your delta will increase. Delta is the angle difference between your rotating frame and the rotor so that delta will increase now once a this is delta 2 delta two, once a delta 2 increases that will affect uh, this value delta delta 1 minus delta 2 will be changing ok now in your second case uh, input power mechanical input input to the generator is increasing ok so your P out of the generator is constant and your P in increases input power is increasing and your output power is not changing so in such a case your generator will accelerate and your delta 1 increases these are two different cases so for a generator acceleration results in increase in delta and for a motor deceleration release results in increase in delta so here also your delta 1 minus delta 2 will change so there can be different conditions different uh, combinations by which your delta can change now your uh, as we have told as i have told theta remains fixed for a transmission line because you have some ratio of res reactance to resistance so assume that your theta is 80 degrees now with different load conditions available your delta can be matched to 80 which results in maximum power transfer ok so your delta can be matched in any any one of the conditions so that your uh, maximum power can be transferred if your machine is a if your load is a synchronous motor now again from this equation here we have one more result to uh, consider your qr from equation one your qr was vs dr by by x sin theta minus delta minus vr squared by x sin theta so once you have you are trying to de deliver maximum power your theta will be equal to delta and uh, so this term will be zero so you will get uh, qr equal to minus vr squared by z sin delta or theta sin delta equal to sin theta so it will be sin delta or sin theta 
Now you have a negative sign here. Okay, this negative sign will be present here also. So this negative sign indicates that you have a capacitive load, load or it is a synchronous motor. Your reactive power is negative indicates that you have a capacitive load or a synchronous motor which is delivering reactive power. Over accelerated synchronous motor delivering reactive power. So, so these conditions verify that you have a synchronous motor which can uh, transfer maximum power at some theta and matches with the delta equal to some 80 degrees or something. So which is less than the ideal condition. So you have some difference between the earlier case and this case. So what is this difference? In value so this is the losses that line losses that happen in the system different uh, active power losses that happen in your transmission line and other devices so once you neglect the losses you can transfer more power that much more power can be transferred so once you include the losses you can transfer less amount of power so here p max value reduces again this is the steady state stability limit for this particular condition that is with a synchronous load you can have a steady state stability limit of p max this this value of p max okay so if you neglect the resistance your steady state stability limit increases it will move to this 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 value okay now when you consider the case for an induction motor okay as I have already told, uh, your delta is given by delta 1 minus delta 2. And for an induction motor, this delta 2 is not present. Okay. So that is delta 1 minus 0 because for induction motor, there is no concept of delta or angle. So your uh, delta is equal to delta 1 which is of the generator. Okay. So you have a limitation for change of delta values for generator. Okay, because the generator may lose synchronism if your delta, delta is increasing beyond some particular value. So you cannot uh, or you cannot load the machine beyond a particular value. So that we will see in detail in the coming lectures why it happens. Now remember that you, are, you have no room for variation of delta as we have the case for a synchronous motor. Now if you are considering an induction that you are, if you assume that your theta is equal to 90 degree for a lossless line, you will get your PRS as a earlier case PS VR by x sin delta and QRS this equation so and uh, PRS proportional to delta and QRS proportional uh, voltage difference or uh, voltage difference or uh, voltage difference or potential difference and practically we'll be operating we'll be operating the machine for a delta which is close to 30 to 45 degrees generally our uh, most of the loads are induction motor loads in nature, reactive loads in nature, inductive reactive loads in nature. So uh, you will have a operating delta of 30 to 45. So this is the range of delta at which your general uh, system operates. So you will have a room for increasing the power up to this value. Okay. So if you are operating at this point with this particular delta, with this particular delta and uh, this particular power, you have the room for increasing the power up to this maximum point okay but if you are operating your uh, operating at this point so you have only can in, will increase the power only to this value so generally the system will be designed in such a way as to absorb some transients okay in order to have so some transients in the and uh, remain stable during the transient period so we'll see how that happens okay now uh, from this lecture, what you should be understanding is that um, your power angle curve is a curve that is plotted between power transferred and the uh, angle delta. And uh, for an ideal condition, assuming a lossless line or r equal to zero, you can transfer maximum power when your delta is equal to 90 degree. And uh, whatever the power that can be transferred is that magnitude, that value is known as a steady state limit under this condition. Steady state. Uh, stability limit steady steady state stability limit under this condition so mm, when you are considering different types of loads you can transfer maximum power if you are having a synchronous load because you have you have the value of delta that can be varied 
okay so delta can be matched to the value of theta to transfer maximum power so uh, if you are having a synchronous load we can uh, transfer the maximum power up to a value of delta equal to 80 or 85 degrees so if this this is a steady state stability limit value v max for case of synchronous motor so again when, once you come to the when, once you go for the synchronous uh, instead of synchronous motor once you go for an induction motor generally you operate uh, your uh, system at a delta of 30 to 45 degrees so this is general operating range of delta and this is done in order to provide some room for uh, absorbing the transient transients in the system so in the next class we will be seeing how these transients are happening in the system or we will analyze the transient stability in a detailed manner using this power angle curve okay so with this we have come to the end of this lecture